I did some thread painting on a peacock applique, but before I start, I just want to show you the back first. It actually looks really good on the back. I, I know I need to trim a few threads, but that looks really great. All right, now for the front. Hi, I'm Monica, welcome to my studio. Today I've been given the challenge to work out how to embellish and stitch this beautiful peacock applique which was designed by my daughter Alora. I decided to do some easy thread painting, perfect for a beginner to make a beautiful textile art. Thread painting is a great way to take an applique design to the next level and to really turn it into a great textile art. So if you're looking for basic thread painting, this video is for you. Once I applied my applique shapes onto my background fabric using fusible web, I then stabilized my work with this thin dense iron-on pellon so I ironed that on that's going to make my work nice and firm so that I'm able to easily maneuver around while I'm doing free motion sewing so to do free motion sewing you're going to need a free motion foot or a stippling foot and for the threads I just used a range of machine embroidery threads look they're all different um, I wasn't so worried because this is actually just going to be something that I'm going to put in a frame and I like machine embroidery threads because I like how it gives it a nice sheen this time what I did most times I'll actually use bobbin fill in the bobbin but I decided to use the same thread in the bobbin just so that I didn't have any tension problems with the bobbin thread coming to the top and the other thing I used was a size 80 top stitch needle so that's got a larger eye in it and size 80 is a, is a nice medium size needle um, we need something like that because we're doing lots of stitching lots of dense stitching disclaimer my thread did break quite a few times so I changed my needle quite a few times and halfway through my um, thread painting I did have to stop and clean my sewing machine so here's my finished thread painting my beautiful textile art and what I did this time was rather than using my applique shape and stitching around the edge of it I used every applique shape as a base for the stitching that I did so I've got these beautiful curved feathers and um, I just used that to do the stitching on top of um, you can also see here like with the circles just outlining the circles and more of this backwards and forwards stitching so I basically um, really only used two movement movements when I was making this circles and straight lines going backwards and forwards and just trying to get a little bit of a curve in there which gives lots of movement and texture to your design even with the flowers here rather than outlining around the edge of the flowers it was just lots of backwards and forwards stitching just to hold that down in place and just to really make everything pop and that's why I use these beautiful shiny threads the other thing I did was um, I always made sure the thread that I stitched on top of the fabric so here I've got a green fabric and um, I've used an aqua thread on top of that I've got my lighter blue I've used a dark blue on my dark blue I used a beautiful peacock green color so my threads were always either contrasting or standing out um, on top of the applique fabric that they were sewn on top of to practice the circular and backwards and forwards motion make sure you prepare yourself some practice pieces so some applique shapes on top of background fabric and you will need a nice firm pellon or some tear away underneath your fabric so to get started just attach your free motion foot and drop the feed dogs that means that you are now in control of moving your fabric around you can also use quilters gloves if you want to they've got rubber grips on them um, I didn't but that's something that you can do if you want to so come along with me now as I show you how I made my thread painted peacock to sew one of these long feathers first of all I used a fabric marker and I drew a line down the center and then just so I can refer to when I'm sewing I just draw some lines coming out from that center line these are going to be the shaggy parts of the peacock's feather this just helps me to know which direction to sew as I'm going along there so what I'm going to do first of all I'm going to start at the top of the feather I'm going to bring the bobbin thread up to the top 
I like to use tweezers there because I've got thread or I have thread cutters on my sewing machine. And I'm just going to sew a little bit. Just to get my threads secure. I'm going to snip off the threads. And away I go. To sew a flower, I actually just sewed from flower to flower and then I'll come back and cut my thread later on. So I started off just by doing a little tiny circle in the centre, just round and round and round, like that, and then I just did straight lines going in and out all the way around the edge of the flower. Going backwards and forwards and working all the way around the flower. To sew the leaves I'm just going to fill in the leaf shape with a backwards and forwards stitch. So the beak I'm just going to once again work backwards and forwards. This is how I stitch the peacock's comb. To sew the body of the peacock, all I did was just stitch backwards and forwards, just filling in the shape. So once again, I like to use my marker just to give myself an idea of the lines and the direction that I'm going to sew. So I'm just kind of outlining the shape and putting some curves in there. Now this is the same way that I also sewed the tree and as I said, all the other parts of the peacock's body.
To sew the yellow circles like I did here, I first of all used a royal blue colour thread and I just sewed a nice sort of tight circle towards the top edge of the yellow circle. And here I am, I'm ready to start sewing, just to show what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to, first of all, sew the circle that I want and then I just work my way in, just filling in um, with the blue thread. So the next part of this circle is I've put an aqua colour thread on and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to outline the very edge of the yellow circle and then I'm just going to keep spiralling around and this time it doesn't matter if I sew on the outside of the circle, I just want to try and build up that section there. Now I'm going to work on the feather that is below the circle and I sewed all of the feathers below the circles in this way. So once again I got my marker just to give me an idea of the direction in which I want to sew. I marked the center first of all and then I marked my lines just showing that they're going to be kind of angling out and away from the center. Like that. And then I started from this corner and I just sewed my straight lines backwards and forwards like this. And there's that shape feather. So that's how I sewed all of the um, feathers that were below the circles. And you can see here all of my curved feathers they were all sewn in the same way with the line down the center and the lines working out so trying to get that um, curved line um, really gives um, some fantastic movement to our peacock's tail the last thing I have to sew is the eye and um, as it's such a tiny piece and important piece I didn't want to make a mistake by working free motion so I've just put my open toe foot on and I'm just going to sew that with black thread and I've got a really small stitch length on of 1.4 and all I'm going to do is just very carefully outline the eye. Just pivoting after every stitch so I can get around that tiny little eye. And then I'm just going to continue on and stitch the white of the eye. So I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. I had a lot of fun making it. Let us know how you go. Um, and look, you can see the back even looks really nice too. Thanks for watching, bye.